Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Priest Facts. This is an answer questions episode, so let's like to get right to it, shall we? Patrick from Ohio, how smart is Tyrannosaurus Rex? Well, in terms of intelligence, we can't really figure that out. Because you see, we can't really take a fossil and actually give it an IQ test. Because that's one thing that a lot of scientists can't do with extinct animals, is that we can't really actually determine how smart uh a particular extinct animal really is but we can actually look at the the shape of the brain in terms of actually looking at the CT scans look at the brain case and see where see where the brain actually is in that brain case and then we actually determine like uh, the diameter and the su and of the and pretty much like the other parts of the brain um, that are probably uh, kind of actually imaged through that um, spot in the brain in the brain case where the brain would actually be and in terms of intelligence that would actually determine on the uh, cerebrum which is the part of the brain which is associated with cognitive thinking and and also and also um, uh, how you actually use your uh, senses a little bit more you know and in terms of Tyrannosaurus rex it's actually kind of it actually kind of has uh, a little bit of expansion so that would actually suggest that um, it does have some cognitive abilities, not not as not not to the advancements of like say some of the, like the dromaeosaurs like uh, Velociraptor, uh, Utah Raptor, Deinonychus, you know those those sorts of guys, or even Troodon. Troodon would actually be these is actually the smartest uh, dinosaur that w that we actually kind of actually know about, considering that it has a large brain compared to its body size. Um, in case of Tyrannosaurus rex, uh, the brain to body size, it's actually quite small. It's actually quite small uh, compared to the body size. But but in terms of actually in terms of length, uh, the brain of a Tyrannosaurus rex is almost is almost the same length as to ours. But but it's not really it's not really as thick as ours, just because we're mammals and also we're primates. And so primates actually would actually have a bigger brain uh, compared to their body size. And then so with uh, with Tyrannosaurus rex, I would say the intelligence would actually be kind of like kind of like more like uh, like house cats, or otherwise maybe like uh, some pretty close to maybe like uh, uh, domestic dogs, considering that uh, they're actually considering that they're actually uh, sort of intelligent animals, but those are easily trained animals. Could we train Tyrannosaurus rex if we actually went back th back in time? Probably not, considering that it, it's not really a mammal. Um, and also, in terms of that, how reptiles are kind of actually are in captivity is that they're smart. It's just because they know they're going to be fed. They know they're going to be fed. It's because uh, we actually do like teach it like all sorts of tricks and all that sorts of stuff is because we because they know we give them food and so that sort of stuff but uh in terms of intelligence scale it'll probably be prime like close to house cats or domestic dogs uh that's how smart Tyrannosaurus rex really is and his second question is what is the fastest species of dinosaur well the ornithomimids are actually considered to be the fastest of all the dinosaurs considering that they have very long legs they actually have uh, very long lower leg bones and compared to the femurs and also they actually have that ostrich like uh, type of uh, body shape so probably like dinosaurs like say Gallimimus, Ornithomimus or even Struthiomimus you know those types of dinosaurs uh, I would actually say those would actually be the fastest we can't really determine like how fast it could really be in terms of because because we can't actually find out uh, what their tracks are I mean we might have Struthiomimus tracks maybe Ornithomimus tracks uh, but not really that much of Gallimimus considering those are actually a little bit rare to find because uh, see dinosaur tracks are actually very rare uh, compared to their compared to the fossil bones and so those are actually going to be very tough to figure out. So maybe um, I would say probably between 40 to 50 miles per hour uh, would actually be the top speed for a lot of those guys. 
almost the same speed as a as a full-grown ostrich. All right, Brendan from Morris, New York. Uh, was Antisarcus really a predator or a scavenger? Well, predator and scavengers are, ex are ex is kind of actually a debate on on cer certain types of of uh, extinct animals, especially carnivores. But with a mammal like Androsarcus, uh, Androsarcus is a hoofed predator. And so it actually has hooves on its feet, not really claws. And so it would kind of be more like a carnivorous horse, or a, or, or otherwise in terms of like a, where, where it's distinctively related in terms of the family tree of the hoofed mammals. Um, it's related towards like say sheep, goats, and also it's actually distinct. It's actually distinctly related to uh, whales, if you believe it or not. Um, so Androsarcus, I would actually think um, it probably could hunt down its own prey. Probably would actually take down like smaller uh, prey, like say, because when you have gigantic jaws and you actually have bone crushing teeth and you actually have a very powerful bite force you're more likely to actually go after things that are smaller than you uh compared to animals that are bigger than you because if you go after animals that are bigger than you then you're not likely to actually crush their bones it's because you're not really going to get into those bones very very greatly so i would actually say uh, it probably could hunt down like smaller prey probably like juvenile uh, brontotheres, um, probably like uh, miniature horses, uh, if it actually could catch those. And uh, in terms, I think it would probably be a little bit more of a scavenger uh, than anything, but it's an opportunist. All, pred all predators, all carnivores today are actually opportunistic. They don't rely solely on, like, hunting or scavenging. They actually prefer both it's because they give an oppor when an opportunity comes by they'll take it you know whether there's like a like a, a carcass in their territory and it's in walking distance they're willing to actually go they're willing to actually just take it because it's actually a free meal but if there's no no dead carcasses around uh in its in its uh territory then it can go after uh a certain prey that it that it has to in, within its environment and so it would probably be an opportunistic pr predator but I would actually say it would actually be leaning towards the scavenger side than on the predator side so that's my opinion and your second question is will we ever find a Tyrannosaurid or Tyrannosauroid mummy well the Hell Creek formation is probably have the best uh, has probably has the best pr preservation out of any um, uh, formation that a uh, rock formation that actually has tyrannosaurs in it because uh, there's other uh, formate rock formations that actually have tyrannosaurs but I think the Hill Creek formation probably actually has the best preservation out of any uh, a rock formation in terms of the Mesozoic so I would actually say we might more likely actually find like a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex um, preserved in the Hill Creek formation with possibly uh, some skin and maybe some uh, remnants of where feathers could possibly be, be have been attached. Could we actually find an adult uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex mummy? It's a slight chance, very very slight chance. Uh, like say, I would actually say like a point zero 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 one percent chance uh, to actually find one because your your odds of actually finding. Uh, uh, a Tyrannosaur mummy would actually be uh, probably a million to one, you know, because that would actually, it would actually be the hardest thing to find. Uh, we actually have found um, mummified ceratopsians, we actually found uh, mummified hadrosaurs, but not really carnivores, because carnivores are actually very difficult to actually kind of have them, have them preserved properly, and so if it was an adult, it would actually have to be buried really quickly um, by the time it has died. So, like a a massive flash flash flood uh, that actually would carry a bunch of sediment would actually have buried that that Tyrannosaurus Rex 
really, really quickly. And also, it would take a lot of sediment to actually cover up uh, an adult Tyrannosaurus Rex. But of a juvenile, that actually could be the case of where you don't need as much sediment, but you can actually bury it really quickly. So I would actually say a juvenile will actually be more likely the case to actually find a, a mummified Tyrannosaur. Uh, as for the other formations, not so much. Um, cause those other types of formations where tyrannosaurs have been found, uh, they don't actually have the greatest preservation and, and, and likely to actually preserve skin or any soft tissues and soft tissues rarely fossilize. And so that's really going to be the hardest, uh, thing to fossilize. There would be impressions of the skin of certain animals. I mean, we have find a tiny piece of tyrannosaurus rex skin which was off of Y-Rex, but it's a tiny amount, tiny. It's like millimeter, it's like, it's like cent, like maybe like a couple centimeters or even like, a, like maybe 10 millimeters um, in diet, in, um, I would actually say in length or in diameter. And it's, it's very small, very, very small. And we can't really say where, where it might've been placed. It might've been placed on the, on the belly of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And so that's probably like a, a reason to say that Tyrannosaurus Trinus, probably actually had uh, kind of like scaly bellies. And then there probably might have been feathers like on the back. And, um, like on the back, like from the base of the tail all the way towards like to the top of the head. And maybe there might have been some feathers on the arms, but we can't really actually say if there's any evidence to support that. But... I mean, other transfers have been found with feathers on them. All right, that's it for now. Uh, next week would actually be a special episode. So if you got uh, a dinosaur or any other prehistoric animal you want me to talk about, mainly vertebrates, uh, feel free to email it to me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or always go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. You can actually post them uh, in the comment section on whatever Facebook post I actually say. There will be a special episode coming up. and um, But still, you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or others go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you can actually post your questions on the comment section or even post them on the wall uh, uh, on the Facebook page, but make sure you like the page and uh, and I post all the videos and all that sort of it right in there and uh, and um, and other stuff as well. And all, you can also follow me on Twitter at CSJRLL. That's my Twitter page. I post political stuff on there. Also, take care of the people around you. And also, for younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivations you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. And I'll see you guys next week.